So we need to make a substitution in order to evaluate this integral. So we have something to the fourth power. If we could just let that be u, and if we had u covered, we'd be all set. <clears throat> so that's the substitution we can try. There's really no one size fits all method where you can always get the right substitution. Sometimes you just have to guess. So my guess is that cosine theta is going to be u. And if that works, then I need to have du as well. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So I almost have that. I'm going to just stop it. Sine. Sine, it's negative sine theta. I have positive sine theta, so I can get negative sine theta by factoring out a negative one. Okay, so now my, sub, my integration is ready to change variables. I have du in the numerator, and I have u to the fourth in the denominator. Now this is with respect to u's. <clears throat> right, because if cosine is u, this is cosine to the fourth, so that's u to the fourth. And so that's asking us to find the antiderivative of u to the negative fourth. So when we find an antiderivative, it's the reverse of the derivative, right? So the power goes up by one. So the antiderivative is, and you'll notice I dropped the limits of integration because now we're in terms of u. We can put things back in terms of x in just a second. So, uh, Okay, so when we find the antiderivative, the power goes up by one. So that, now that's u to the negative third. But if we were to take a derivative right now, a negative 3 would come down and multiply. So that's why we got to compensate by sticking a negative sign out here and dividing by 3. Now it's the antiderivative, and you can check because the negative 3 comes down, multiplies to the negative 1, which makes positive 3. 3 divided by 3 makes 1, just like it's supposed to, and then the power reduces by 1. Okay, but now I'll put things back in terms of x. That way I can get those limits of integration back in there. So that's negative cosine. To the third theta, uh, sorry, that's to the negative third, isn't it? Over three. And then those limits of integration are from zero to pi over six. And now we can finish this out by just substituting pi over six and zero in there. Um, but it might be easier to move that negative to the denominator, so that's negative one over 3 cosine to the third theta. Same expression. I haven't done the limits of integration yet. Okay, so now we can plug in those limits of integration. Uh, if we plug in pi over 6, and actually a negative times a negative makes it positive, so let's take care of that. So that's 1 over 3, and cosine pi over 6, if you remember pi over 6 is a 30 degree angle. So 30 degrees would have 1 half, if you memorize these reference triangles from before, across from it. And that's square root of 3 over 2 here. So cosine would be the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. So cosine pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 2. And then we raise that to the third power. And then we want to subtract that by what happens when we plug in zero. And negative, negative made a positive there. So that's why I've got uh, subtracted by a positive one. That's one over three. And then cosine of zero is one. Okay, so there's probably a little more simplification you could do. You might be able to plug that in as it is um, into WebAssign. I think it might be okay right here.